Hello, I'm Alegria Rivadeneira. I am co-PI of our OER grant here at Colorado State University in Pueblo. And this week we're celebrating Open Education Week. And with me today, I have Professor Jorge Arroyo, one of our OER heroes. So Professor Arroyo, I'm so glad you're here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at the university. Um, first of all, thank you for, for inviting me. Um, I'm originally from Puerto Rico. I teach entry-level Spanish at CSU Pueblo 101, 102. Occasionally I'll teach a 314 class. Um, and then also through extended study, sometimes I teach classes out in the, in the community as well. Wow, well, sounds like you are very a very busy man. <laughs> Try to stay busy. And, <laughs> yes, and now I know that you are involved with uh, some OER initiatives on campus. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what brought you to OER. So what brought me to OER was my students, you know, semester after semester, those first two weeks while they're trying to acquire a book. Um, it takes a lot of their time away in your time too, because you you don't want to leave them behind and of course you know textbook costs have all keep going up and so having the book already before they we even see each other in class for them to access and look through even when they're just looking to sign up for the class um, i think reduces a lot of stress for the students and it clearly outlines and they can know what to expect from the course um, and so so those two things mainly and the third thing is um i've been interested in just working for a while on an OER and developing one for other classes for like um, first responders or things of the sort. So it's always been there. I've looked at other OERs, but it seemed like such a daunting thing to do that I never had the courage until recently to, to, to try it. Wow, yeah. I love that story. And I like how you highlighted the fact that students can have the book from the very first day of class and even beforehand as they are choosing classes mm -hmm. to see what it is that they would be studying. So that is a fantastic way to look at it. And I love that you're thinking of other OER for the community as well. That's great. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, no, I was just gonna say, uh, you know, uh, reaching out to the community, not only to promote what we're doing here, but also what needs do you have? I mean, I, we live in a, a, in a predominantly Hispanic, uh, town here we had an hsi so you know those language needs can be tended to here fairly easily you know if we just re if they know that they have the resources there for them oh i love that and you just pinpointed another aspect of oer which is that we can tailor the content to our audience yeah. much better than what large commercial textbooks can do right so right. Uh, that's a fantastic point thank you for sharing that so um could you tell us a little bit about your current projects with oer so um, currently I am with, along with Dr. K uh, Catherine Brown in our department, we're doing the 101, 102 and 201 textbooks, which are arguably the most important books in our program because they are fundamental, right? Uh, for the language. And so whether or not they decide to do a minor or a major or a double major, uh, we wanna make sure that these three classes specifically lay down a solid foundation that it attracts them even more to the language and cultures behind it. Okay, so um, we've taken our time to ensure that we are tending to the, to the needs of multiple language learners, not just our L2, but also, like I said, we're at HSI. So we have a lot of first generation heritage learners, and those are great repositories for cultural knowledge because whether or not they, they, they manage the language at a proficient level, according to standards, they do have a lot of knowledge about the culture. And that's very important in the classroom for you to connect to the language and understand it. Um, so, so that's another thing that I really look forward to because now we're not only using the resources that are available to us instructors, but also the resources that are in the classroom in our students themselves. Wow. Oh, I love that. And I agree. Foundational Spanish is key to not only the second language learners, but the heritage language learners that we serve in our community. And I really enjoyed uh, your perspective on what they bring to the class culture-wise as well, and how we can integrate that into our OER. Thank you for sharing that. Now, um, you 
in a way have mentioned a little bit of how it benefits students, your OER with them having the book at the beginning of the semester and having uh, content tailored to them. Uh, to them. Uh, what other benefits uh, do you see with OER for your students or your program? Um, so for my students, and honestly, it's probably myself more than anything, because, you know, I'm a, you can be a little selfish when you're developing it, is that, again, you tailor your class to your students. And the cool part is you always have the latest edition, because as the class is going, you start noticing, oh, this didn't work so well with this group, or, oh, I got this new idea, let me implement that for next you know, semester of my other class or whatever it may be. So that's a huge plus, right? And it's fun for you to create your own content and pull from um, a community like ours that has so much like as far as uh, Mexican, Mexican American culture, Chicano culture, right? Uh, and you could just bring that into the classroom. So that's a lot of fun. Whereas, you know, with a textbook, then it's, it's I don't wanna say limited, but it's kind of generic, right? We the traditional countries are always in there, but not the community, especially the ones here in the United States, because, you know, somebody in, for example, like we were talking earlier, Miami, Florida, who is Venezuelan, right, is not the same as maybe a third generation Mexican American in LA. It's just not going to, it's a different experience, though it, it, they intersect in many places. And so, and OER allows you to, depending on where you are in the country, in the world, to really tailor that to your, your, your population in your classroom. Oh, absolutely. And I, I agree that that is one of the greatest benefits that we can have our students' lives reflected in our textbooks and our OER so they can connect even stronger to the learning process as well. Uh, thank you so much for, for pointing that out. I think it's gonna be important for people to think about that as they're developing their own OER. And you mentioned that you um, are having a lot of fun and there's a lot of satisfaction in doing this. Can you talk a little bit more about what satisfactions ha um, have you had working on OER, both in the production end and the pedagogical end and the cultural aspect? Um, so in, in the pedagogical it's great one I'm, I'm working with with somebody very knowledgeable so it's good to bounce ideas back and forth and one of the things that I love is we have really tried to reduce as much as possible without losing um, value right the, the grammar content right these are the mechanics right lead the mechanics because nowadays you know you go online and everything's one two three so our students or at least our traditional students are very much used to that so we want to make the grammar very accessible, quick to access, quick to reference, right? And doesn't have to be this whole lecture where you have to read paragraph after paragraph, okay? Because what we really want them to do, at least in Spanish, is to use a language to produce, whether it's speaking, whether it's writing, okay? Um, so that's a good thing about our OER. Like, we're like, okay, we're doing said, here's what you need for said, and now immediately into practice and to start talking and producing. And that builds confidence, uh, it's a lot easier to teach that way because your students already expect that they are the ones producing the lesson of the day in, in their learning. And, and then you can get creative. Like, again, you go back to your community and like, okay, we are in, for example, we're going to go to Bruce Ale House, right? Quien quiere una cerveza? Oh, okay, bien. And then you have to go through the whole spiel, right? And our students have been there. So it's, it's not unfamiliar to them. And you role play, you have fun. Aesthetically, I use a lot of emojis or starting to. That's kind of cheesy, but it's a lot of fun too for those of us that have an artistic, you know, or an artist that's just trapped inside of us. So that's the other thing for you. And then those of us that are technologically um, very literate, another chance for you to showcase your, your abilities, right, that you have learned along the way. And if not, then it's an opportunity for you to learn. Oh, I love that. What, a, what an enormous amount of satisfaction yeah. uh, you have expressed on the creative side of it. And even for uh, us producing the OER, the opportunities of trying something new and learning can be very, very exciting, definitely, versus a commercial textbook where we just 
take what they give us and make do with whatever is there, right? right so I, right. I just love that. Now, as many satisfactions as we have, I know that not everything is roses. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you could share some of the challenges that you've had and how have you overcome? So I think the first challenge for me was the anxiety that comes when you come into the project because you're like, oh my God. And then when you see examples online, you're like, there's no way like I'm prepared to do this. But you're not. One, you're never alone. There's there are resources out there. there uh, if they're not at your institution, they're online, available for you. And there are plenty of people like Alegria, myself, that will sit down and 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 help you out to talk to you the little bit that we know. Um, so that that was probably the hardest. But once you see how much is out there for you to pull from, then you're like, okay, this is just a matter of organizing myself and and where I want to take this. Um, another challenge was when, when specifically, you know, we want to reflect population and, and the diversity of our population here. And so when you're doing, for example, image searches we've talked about before, it's kind of difficult to reflect that, right? Um, so that, that took a while. Again, we have a great team. So um, we have this ongoing links of websites for photos, for examples, all kinds of things, right? Um, so that was easy to overcome just by honestly wording it. And then immediately it's like, Hey, I got this. So you realize that somebody has the same problem. Maybe they found a solution. And if not, then you work together to find it. Um, and then last is, is, and this is always, I think in anything, when you're working is time, you know, you sometimes you're like, okay, I'm going to two hours last week. I was like, I got two hours slotted for, to work on my OER. And it turned out to be like three and a half. Why? Because I really got caught up enjoying doing my family tree or something. You know what I'm saying? And, and it really needs that time and attention. Um, but don't get too worked up about it. I have slotted times in my calendar when it's like, this is working on OER. And even if it's just looking at another OER, that's working. Okay. So, so be kind to yourself and allow yourself that breathing room. Okay. And, and pace yourself. Oh, I love it. Uh, definitely, uh, I think you pinpointed to one of the most important aspects of it, which is the community. Uh, really relying on other people to help you. And uh, one of the things I love about the OER community is that people are very helpful. Yeah. We're by nature a very sharing kind, because if not, we wouldn't be involved in any of this, right? We right. want to share. And there are so many resources, but I also agree about the challenges of being overwhelmed and the need to organize ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you've already sort of started giving us a few little pointers on um, uh, how to uh, work through some of the challenges. Um, what else would you recommend for people who are just starting to uh, work on their own OER? Um, recommend, if possible, um, get a good team going. And, you know, we don't have to be best friends, but we have to be excited and about what we're doing together. And it'll take less time. And you, you'll be amazed at how much ideas just start flowing just when you have somebody there to listen and bounce right back to you, give you some feedback. That's very important. Second would be, as far as technology goes, do not let any of these platforms online or apps or anything intimidate you, okay? Because they are made, right? To, to be as accessible and simple. And there, YouTube is a great university for that. Uh, you know, I always say so, but as uh, it looks fancy, it might look like it's really hard, but trust me, you just take your time, take a breath or two and, and you can wade right through it. It's not, it's not a big deal. Just remember that it's not a big deal. Okay. Um, and then last I think is um, have fun. Be really creative. We've all had like, oh, if I could do this, this is it. This is that moment. This is your moment. Like we say, you know, bota la casa por la ventana. You know, throw the house out the window. Everything goes, you know, just try everything out. And whatever sticks, good. Whatever doesn't, then we pick it back up and then try it again. All right. So just definitely that is your moment to shine and to um, tend to those problems and stuff that you see in your classroom or your institution. Okay. So go for it. Ask for all the help you need and go for it. Oh, I love it. How inspiring. How inspiring. I hope everyone took note. And uh, 
I really want to thank you for spending this time with us today. Thank you. Uh, giving us some insights to your own journey and some of your thoughts on how other people can embark on something similar. Have a wonderful rest of your Open Education Week. Thank you. And thank you again. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the week. Yeah. <laughs>